Hey, and welcome to the product installation video of our 510 rear suspension kit that we offer. So first we're gonna go over what's included. What's included is you're gonna have the rear cross member, the rear mustache bar, the trailing arms, a set of the shorter links and the lower links, uh, bushings for the mustache bar, bushings for the rear cross member, as well as all the hardware. When it comes to the hardware, on the top, you're gonna get a set of carriage bolts, washers and nuts. Those go on to here. Those are gonna be for what the sway bar is gonna to bolt to. Now the sway bar doesn't come with the kit. Some guys don't run a rear sway bar with the 510 rear suspension kit. But if you do purchase the 510 rear sway bar that we offer, you would be able to use those hardware. Following that, you'll get four of the misalignment spacers that go onto the trailing arms. You'll get 16 misalignment spacers that go into each one of these eyelets that allow to take up the space, neck down the sides, and give enough misalignment so you're not binding. You're also then going to get eight of the bolts for these, they're gonna be shorter. You'll also get two bolts that bolt to the rear trailing arm, to the rear cross member, as well as four longer bolts that go to bolt the differential in place in the front. It does come with a bunch of washers, so you'll put a washer on top of each bolt and nut, as you'll see here shortly once you get into the car. You'll also have 16 of the nuts that go onto each one of the bolts, as well as the bolts for the differential and where the crossover mounts to the trailing. So you should have a hardware pack that has every bit of hardware, the items that you see here on the table. And if for some reason you're missing anything, definitely give us a call, we'll make sure we get that set right. Now, the other thing to note is, we're gonna go over a couple things that you should be aware of before purchasing this. We did cover this in the product overview, but we do wanna also make sure it's this. Now we do offer this in the factory differential, the R160, R180, as well as the R200 option. Now the R200 option, it is a little taller on the, on the rear cross member to fit for the larger pinion, as well as it has a more of a further back protrusion to fit for the longer diff. Uh, if you do have the R200 version, you will have to trim a little bit on the car. I'll show you that in the video here pretty soon as well as the other thing is gonna be our bearings. So now you'll see here is our bearings are machined and then they get welded. Now the bearing on this is slightly larger than the factory bearing, about a 16th, maybe a give or take a couple thousands on that. So some brake kits are really snug around the factory bearing as well as the factory bearing actually recesses in a little bit. Ours goes straight just because it's machined before it gets welded. We had to keep that to this thickness to prevent warping for the bearing. We did try to run it as small as we can, but to get our bearings within tolerances, we did have to make that a little bit bigger. So depending on the brake kit that you buy, aftermarket brake kits especially, you might have to open up that little cup where the bearing goes to. I'm gonna show you a quick example of this. This is the bracket that somebody sells. I think this adapts to the Toyota calipers or the 240SX, I don't really know if the customer supplied this. But you can see here, the holes line up, but it's just a tad too small to be able to slide underneath where you would on a traditional 510 or a trailing arm. So you just have to trim a little bit of material on here so then you're able to fit that over. The other piece that you'll also notice is now we have this moved towards the back so it allows for more oil pan high capacity and clearance for the back. We did make this change back in 2023 or maybe 2024 so it does allow for that and every kit after that has obviously been with the updated version. So now we're gonna go ahead to the car and first I'm gonna show you where to trim for the R200 and then we're gonna start installing the parts. All right, so the R200 would pretty much require only trimming right here. You see it's ever so slightly and it's pretty much where the back of this lip meets this piece of sheet metal and it would only really be about a quarter inch and down where that curves around. But because this customer is gonna be installing an R180, we're not gonna go, we're, we don't need to do that. All right, so this customer is gonna be actually using the Subaru R180 differential. So you'll notice on a Subaru flange, they actually are rounded completely. And our opening for ours is slightly smaller than for the flange. It does fit the factory differential fine, and if you upgrade to an R200, it is taller. So sometimes what customers have done is they'll just cut off the corners of the flange, or you can always remove the flange, install the differential, and then reinstall the flange. We have looked at the options to try and see if we can figure out a way to make this bigger, but with the tooling that we have to form the press brake, unfortunately, we don't have a way to make it so it'll go straight, goes up with such a fast corner or back and straight down. 
So for at least for the time being, until we figure out a, another method, either for the customers running the R2, R180 from a Subaru, then you will have to trim. You really only need to trim a pair uh, sides, but this customer went ahead and trimmed all four um, and, and they'll be work perfectly fine for that. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this into the subframe. So now with it slid in there, you can go ahead and use, put in your bolts. Now you're gonna put one of the half inch washers on top of the bolt head and you're gonna go ahead and put that through. Now, you will notice there is a gap between the top and bottom. We do supply spacers that you can go ahead and install in between those. Most likely you're gonna have one on in the top and one underneath. So we'll go ahead and put those spacers in. So we're gonna go ahead and install then the washers in between to gap out the space on the rear cross member. So we got washer, the washer. We'll go ahead and put those on top. And then we went ahead and got that bolt down. So we're gonna do the same thing to all four sides. All right, so next we're gonna put the rear mustache bar on. You can do this after, however, it is kind of hard to do it with the studs on there. Sometimes you'd have to take the studs out, put the mustache bar. So sometimes if you have a helping hand, it is easier just to do this at one time. Now, the factory mustache bar does not come with washers on the nuts. I do recommend using just two of the washers that we supply with the kit and putting them on to the studs. That way it just has more force and clamping force instead of just having the nut themselves. I know the factory comes with just the nut. We do recommend having the washer on there. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this on and we'll go ahead put those two washers on and we're just gonna hand tighten the nut as far as it can go. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that these are prepped. These are the rear cross member bolts. Now we're just gonna clean them up with a wire wheel because there is sometimes grit and grime and our sleeves are pretty tight onto these. So you just wanna make sure there's no major dirt, debris, wire wheeling them would be a, definitely a bonus. So that way they're super clean and ready for the next step. The other thing for the thing is, is you do have, it does come with these uh, weird isolator things. You do not need to keep them. Some customers have decided to keep them on. Some customers take them off. For this customer, we're gonna leave them off as they're not really needed. By using the washer supplied in the kit, go ahead and sneak up there and go ahead and put your nut on. All right, and then we're gonna jump to the front of the rear cross members and install those nuts. All right, and then here you're gonna reuse the cone washer and the nut. You go ahead and can start tightening that down. But once you get that installed, you can go ahead and torque to the factory spec. So we wanna make sure that we tighten these before we uh, reinstall the mustache bar. And then we went ahead and tightened the mustache bar and the cross member. However, we did leave these loose. Now these holes are slotted, so they do allow for a little bit of variation between chassis. So then we can go ahead and tighten these up. So using a three quarter inch socket and a three quarter inch wrench, you're gonna go ahead and torque these to 20 to 25 foot pounds. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the stub axles to the rear trailing arms for the 510 before installing them on the car. A few things you should be aware of. These are the distance pieces that go onto the factory stub axles. They'll have a stamp on them marked. Now, some of them are gonna be marked either A, B, or C. We recommend using A. Um, some Bs will work, but pretty much our distance piece that we measured off of is the most common. It's gonna be stamped A. Now, you can go ahead and at this time, get yourself a set of new bearings. Just gonna make your life a lot easier. You can reuse the old ones, just better to go off the new ones, as well as the seals. Now, we opted for both side sealed bearings. If you're looking at the factory ones, they have a one side sealed, the other side open. We opted for the both sides sealed inside. It kind of makes for a little bit of cleaner install. As far, as far as installing the stub axles to the trailing arms, we do recommend using the factory manual. The guide is usually that you'll install one, insert the stub axle, as well as put in the other um, bearing, followed by the seal, and then closing it all with the flange. Next, we're gonna go over to the press and get these installed. Now we're just gonna go ahead and install the seal. You don't have to use a press, it's just uh, sometimes it's easier. I'm just gonna pull that out, see if it's all the way seated in there. You can see here we got a little bit of space, so we're gonna go ahead and put some more pressure in there. Great, now that you've installed the bearings and the stub axles into it, you go ahead and put the flange, torque the factory nut 
to the spec shown on the factory manual, and then we're gonna go ahead and install these on the car. Before we install them on the car, you're gonna grab a, piece of, a few pieces of hardware. You're gonna grab the four, three quarter to half inch washers. They're gonna be inserted onto the Heim joints. You're gonna grab four of them, two for each control arms. You're also going to then grab a handful of the half inch washers. Those are gonna go on the bolts for the Heim joints, as well as the bolts and the links for the upper and lower trailing arm, followed by the half inch by three and a half bolts and the nuts for the washers and the nuts for the bolts. All right, so next you're gonna go ahead and install the high misalignment spacers into the bearing. We're gonna go ahead and use the middle hole. Now, we're gonna go over the settings of which hole to select near the end of this video. Right now, we're gonna go ahead and put the half inch bolt through it followed by the washer and followed by the nut on the other side as well. And we're only gonna hand tighten that for right now and then we're gonna install the links to the trailing arm. For the next part, you're gonna be using the misalignment spacers. You're gonna also be using more of these half inch bolts followed by more of the half inch washers and more of these half inch nuts. For links, there's gonna be a shorter one and a longer one. Now this longer one is going to be for the bottom hole and the shorter one is gonna be for the top hole. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the misalignment spacers onto the upper link. Go ahead and we're gonna use the middle hole again. We're gonna slide the bolt with the washer already installed through and then followed by the nut and the washer on the other side. All right, and now that we have the top link put in, we're gonna go ahead and put the other link. So we're gonna first install the misalignment spacers into these. Go ahead and use the middle hole and install the bolt through, and then use the washer and the nut onto the other side. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we use the head of the nuts on this side. This is so you gain the most amount of axle clearance because the threads will stick on the other side and the other side is a little bit longer. All right, so now that we have those two sides installed, we can go ahead and hook up the trailing arm to links. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install the lower and upper links. We're gonna start with the upper link and install that. Now you're gonna put the two misalignment spacers as well, followed by the bolt and the washer Go ahead and line that up. And the same process for the bottom. You have the two misalignment spacers. We're gonna install. Get it onto the trailing arm here. Followed by that bolt. Now here you can see you have the links installed and you have an incredible amount of travel due to the redesigned suspension system. Now you can go ahead and torque all the bolts down. Each one of these nylon bolts, as, long as, and as well as the one for the trailing arm, is gonna to be torqued to 20 to 25 foot pounds. Then the final thing is going to be installing the coilover to the shock mount itself. So one thing to note is depending on how low you are, now this is for the guys that wanna go extremely low, you'll notice this upper link right here interferes slightly with this sheet metal piece of trim. So, depending on how low you are, you may have to make a small cutout in order to clear that for a trim. So now we're going to go ahead and install the coilover to the shock mount. So one thing that we actually did mess up on is installing the lower link before we install the shock mount. It's definitely easiest to install the upper link, install the shock, shock mount, and then install the lower link. It just makes your life easier, otherwise you got to extend this the whole way. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is the whole mounting location. So generally, if you're going to be at the factory ride height, you're gonna want the lowest mounting location, lowest on here, tallest on here is fine, and you can use the lowest two holes. Now, if you're gonna lower your car around two to three inches lower than factory, I'd suggest the middle hole. You can still keep the factory hole and then raising this up one as well. Now, if you're really gonna slam your car, you know, four, five, six inches below factory, then I'd recommend the top hole, top hole, top hole, and then mounting one onto the lower hole onto this one. But this way, most customers are gonna be staying at the middle holes, the middle hole, top hole, and the only bottom hole there. Now, you can see here how easy it is to adjust camber. You can simply turn the 
scalp tube one way and you can pull your camber in and out. If you adjust both, you're able to adjust your toe completely. And we have a lock, uh, we have a double adjuster here, which allows you to adjust your wheel centering in the wheel well. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we pop already, we already popped in the stub axles. So then we can just go ahead and install the factory axle. And then once you went ahead and torqued all your nuts and bolts to the factory spec, Go ahead and get in alignment and you should be ready to ride.